My name is Dave McCann, and for interests of a little round the world trip, I'm dialing in today from Bangkok in Thailand, which is why it's dark for me and bright for you guys. Um, but what I'd like to say, really, is thank you all for joining us. This is the fourth in our series of webinars on the future of touchless parking. We started this back in September with a fairly simple thought. We know that parking operators in the US and in Canada need to go touchless. We know they know it too. But we know that touchless parking upgrades can be expensive, they can be complicated. And it's complicated because there's so many different options with hardware, there's so many different software providers out there. And software is where things can get pretty tricky. And so what we decided we would do is we would present with our technology partners, people who were in the industry already that were trying to help parking operators go touchless where possible. So we figured, hey, if we can get a couple, a couple of companies or a few companies together on one call, we can tell you what you need to know in less time. This 30 minute format seemed to make some sense for everybody. So that's what we're doing. So thank you so much for joining us for those of you who have come back. For those of you that have joined us for the first time, a quick little intro, Get My Parking is a technology platform that provides, provides software services to the parking industry across the world. We're present in over 2,000 locations across the US and in Europe, as well as some other locations in India and Asia as well. Today, I'm very glad to be joined by Tony Albanese. I'm sorry, Tony, I'm, I'm, I'm still not getting your name to be totally American sounding, I'm sorry. That was great, had a little more flair and I like it. All right, so Tony's representing from Park Hub, he's Executive Vice President of Enterprise. We're also joined by Chirag Jain, who's the CEO of Get My Parking. Now, Chirag's got a fun little story. Chirag has just hopped on a flight from, where was it, Delhi? Delhi to New York, you flew? Yeah, 15 hours. All right. So 15 hours straight flight, and he is currently in an apartment, I think, somewhere in New Jersey, right? From the looks of it? Yep. Oh, fabulous. self quarantining well, yes, it's good. It's good that you're doing that. Well, listen, without further ado, today's topic is about the QR code. Now, I'm just going to pop really quickly here onto my screen so that I can I can just share one little context setting story. So let me just move that out the way. Now yeah, let's do it like this. So the QR code is something that's been around for a number of years. I remember it when I was in Toronto, the QR code just came out and it was kind of gimmicky. The QR code was on business cards and on the sides of buses. But as I began to travel around the country and travel around the world, I began to see QR code in a new light. What many of us are familiar with today when it comes to QR codes is what's called show QR. So think to yourself when you're going to an airport and you're checking in without a ticket, you're using show QR. When you're strolling up to a movie theater and you've got your ticket on your phone, you're scanning it with a machine, you're using the QR code there. That's called show QR. But that humble QR code that was kind of gimmicky from 2006 and seven is back in a new way. And the way that scan QR code works today is pretty impressive, particularly if you see what's happening around its usage in Europe and Asia. Now, from, from great conversations that Tony and I have had, it looks as though it's making a pretty strong comeback in where it gets used in the US as well. And so without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to you, Tony, to take us through what's happening with QR code over at Park Hub. Awesome. Thanks, David. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, super excited to share kind of what, what, what we're seeing and what we're doing with, with QR codes, as you mentioned, David. Um, we are seeing, you know, different ways of utilizing these things uh, for, you know, simplifying uh, parking transactions, you know, speeding up those transactions and also, you know, making them completely touchless. So uh, I'm going to share uh, my screen 
and walk through a little bit of you know kind of what what Park Hub does and and how we are um, using QR codes today. David, if you wouldn't mind confirming that you can see my screen, and I know everybody else can as well. Yes, sir. You're up and ready. Excellent. Thank you. So, uh, Park Hub, just a quick quick background, you know, on us, so you know you know where we're coming from. Um, we started uh, in 2015, really focusing in on a specific type of parking, being event parking. Um, so we focus on managing uh, parking at destinations like sports and entertainment venues, uh, amphitheaters, um, you know, places where um, <clears throat> you know it's not necessarily a transient type of operation, somewhere where you're you know purposefully going to a destination. We're in state parks. Uh, we're in ski resorts, uh, theme parks, theaters, performing arts centers, and you know, major arenas, stadiums, et cetera, all over the country. We cover about 40% of all the professional sports teams venues uh, in the United States today, where we provide um, hardware and software as a service uh, products uh, for those parking operations um, designed really to, to kind of focus on, on four things. Um, you know, understanding revenue, um, you know, helping our, our customers figure out how to optimize their revenue, giving them insights on their, their customers' behavior so they can price appropriately, they can understand rival patterns, things like that, streamlining operations with, with live data and, and meaningful analytics, and then, of course, providing a, a safe parking experience for the parking public, which is really kind of what, what brings us to um, all the kind of touchless things that we're going to talk about today. We, we have kind of four main product categories. Uh, first product is what we call Prime. It's a mobile point of sale platform designed for event type parking where people are paying on entry and a parking attendant is taking payment. Uh, traditionally, that was done with cash and with you know those perforated tickets. Um, and, and today that's that's going away. Um, we're seeing you know massive adoption of mobile point sale devices in these types of operations, uh, especially ours. And um, we're, we're moving to make all those things touchless and get rid of that cash. We have a product we call Suite, which is a tool set of uh, uh, business intelligence, uh, including analytics, live data dashboards, et cetera. Uh, we have a programmatic access product through our APIs, and we also distribute uh, parking inventory data uh, from our inventory set out to application providers, in-vehicle systems, and things like that via our uh, Park Hub network global distribution system. So that's quickly what we do. We, we also partner um, across the ecosystem with major ticketing providers, parking applications, parking access revenue control systems, things like that. So that's a little bit about what we do. Uh, and we have started incorporating QR codes into many of these um, uh, different parking modalities uh, to, to drive more revenue, uh, increase ROI, improve the guest experience, and then you know, ultimately uh, improve ingress into parking lots, make that a faster experience, a more enjoyable experience. So in terms of QR codes, so we've, we've, we've adopted kind of three uh, ways of, of utilizing QR codes uh, to, to, those, to those ends. Uh, the, the first way is a new product that we brought out this year, Park Hub Tap. It's a tap to pay function. So uh, that would be the scan QR uh, method that, that David referred to earlier. Um, so we'll go, we'll go through that a little bit. Um, then, then there's the present QR uh, option, which is the scan to pay. So instead of uh, taking a credit card or cash, uh, we're utilizing our mobile point of sale system to scan a customer presented QR code that represents uh, a form of payment. And then of course, um, you know, working in sports and entertainment, uh, we, we, we work with prepaid redemption. So, you know, if you've bought a, a, a ticket to a sporting event and you bought a parking pass, you would present a QR code for that. Um, we're also doing kind of bundles of things and I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit later as well. But first, I would love to know from our audience, uh, how, how many of these different types of, of QR codes have you uh, utilized? And I think David has a poll that we'll get up uh, shortly and, and see if you've done any of these things. 
Have you ever used QR for on-demand payments? Um, that would be presenting a QR code or scanning a QR code to pay for something. Um, have you ever, you know, used this at an at event? Uh, have you ever scanned a prepaid voucher or, or have you never used QR code? Let's give a, a minute or so for the responses. Good to know that there's not many people who have never used QR codes. Especially now, particularly in the US, we're using them to uh, scan uh, restaurant, you know, get a restaurant menu. I think uh, we, we probably maybe should have added that as an option. Yeah, <laughs> I know I've been. done that a number of times. Here, let's, uh, I think we're gonna get, I think we got what we're gonna get. So let's, uh, let's just do this right here. Results. Interesting. I'm actually kind of surprised how many people have used uh, QR for on-demand payments. That's, that's awesome. Very interesting. So kind of speaking to that first on-demand payments, uh, the tap product. So um, I think you, probably everyone is experienced or, or, or uses in your current operation if you have a, a surface lot, a non-gated um, uh, parking area, um, you know, a pay by plate or, or pay by space system, um, which typically, you know, requires some piece of, of hardware on site. Somebody's going to dip their credit card into it. They're going to press some buttons. They're going to press the screen. Um, and, and they're going to use that to put in their license plate number or space number, and then pay for uh, a parking session that way. Um, this product, our tap to pay and scan to pay product, um, converts that into a completely touchless contactless, um, uh, operation. So you don't need any hardware on site. You just have a sign, you scan the QR code, uh, that takes you on your mobile device to a, uh, payment application. Um, so it's just simply a web, uh, interface. There is no app to download or anything to install on your mobile device. Simply scan the QR code, uh, put in your payment information, your license plate or space number, pick your session, you know, whether that's a daily parking or an hourly parking session, um, and then, you know, go on about your business. So, uh, very, very quick, very easy, very cost effective. Um, and that's really leveraging, you know, the power of these quick scan uh, QR codes to make this um, a more streamlined experience and also a much, much safer experience. There's nothing to touch except for your own mobile device. That's kind of one of the ways that we're uh, bringing these out into the world. Uh, the second, the scan to pay. So this is something that we are just beginning to incorporate. Um, so whether that's a Venmo or a PayPal payment method um, or a stored value in some kind of application, for example, uh, we have integrations into um, some of these uh, consumer facing applications that sports teams use. I'll use the Tampa Bay Rays baseball team as an example. Uh, they have a stored value wallet in their application where people can you know, uh, pre-purchase uh, packages uh, that, are, that have value or you know, they, they um, you know, get rewards that are equivalent to dollars, and then we can scan those things with our device, um, and then that deducts from their wallet. Um, the, the great thing about this one, obviously very, very contactless and cashless, uh, it's, it's very flexible. So, you know, this could be an ACH transaction from their bank account. It could uh, relate to a, a credit card or a store value uh, wallet, um, and there's, you know, millions of users of these types of things already. And uh, so it it's offers a, 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 an easy and convenient way for somebody to pay for parking uh, with an application that they already have, doesn't require them to do anything uh, additional. It's super, super fast. So that's the uh, scan to pay option that we've, we've been rolling out. I think this is gonna be very, very popular going forward. Kind of the third way that we're utilizing QR codes is for prepaid redemption. So. Um, this is, you, you've purchased a ticket, uh, you've purchased parking in advance. We just rolled out to uh, uh, eight ski resorts in the United States. 
um, that are that are driving people to prepay for their parking before they arrive as a way of controlling how many people are on the mountain. Uh, they have to operate at reduced capacity, so they're limiting the amount of parking that can occur um, and, and kind of driving all the skiers and visitors to purchase parking in advance. Uh, so that's, you know, safer, it's contactless, there's no paper, uh, there's nothing to exchange between, between the parker and the parking lot attendant. Um, also allows bundles, so we do this, for example, with Live Nation. Uh, in their concerts, you can purchase a package, which includes, uh, for example, your entry ticket, your parking, and you're sitting on the lawn and you want to rent a lawn chair. So uh, you show up in the parking lot, we scan a QR code in the parking lot to allow you uh, to have access to the parking lot. You uh, scan to get into the venue. And then when you get to the uh, lawn chair rental location uh, inside the venue, we scan again and validate that you have a lawn chair rental pre-purchase. So this allows bundles of things to be put together with only one uh, quote unquote ticket to be to be presented. Uh, it makes it super fast and convenient for the consumer to buy all these things at once and just present one thing. So that's, that's how we are using QR codes. Um, find them extremely effective, very quick, and of course, much, much safer than exchanging cash, handing somebody your credit card, or uh, touching a, a machine in a, a pay by play or pay by space scenario. So that's what we're doing and I'll, I'll kick it back to David uh, to go from there. I think the, the ski hill example is a really good idea. I mean, my experiences going up to the mountain are, are just kind of drive in, but that's, uh, and then grab your ticket and off you go. But that's a pretty, pretty easy way to, to constrain the number of people that can come. Brilliant idea. Yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting uh, use case. Uh, uh, we, we didn't come up with it. Uh, one of our, our ski resort partners did, but I thought it was pretty ingenious. And, and so far it's working really, really well. Mm, I love it. Well, thanks for that, Tony. So just as a, an FYI for those that are listening in, we're gonna do the Q and A at the end of the session. So after Chirag's presentation, however, there is a Q&A button that you can click and type your question there if you wanna if you wanna front load it. We'll get to it at the after the presentation. But I think it's uh, it's time to hear from Chirag. Chirag, do you want to take it away? Yep. Thanks, David. Great presentation, Tony. Uh, so just gonna go deeper into what QR can do. And Tony spoke about how uh, with uh, the Park Hub tap, you can use QR for making payments uh, on on-street locations and on uh, uh, PND sites, surface lots. Uh, I'll talk about some other applications of QR, how we at Get My Parking are using QR, not just to make payments on street or on surface lots, but also to open up gates to get validations uh, and to make payments um, mainly for gated facilities. So imagine, you know, I go to a, a shopping mall here and uh, I'm a transient user. I just drive up there. I look at the gate. There's a QR sticker which says scan here. I pull up my phone, scan the QR code and the gate opens, right? So I'm just a transient, I don't have to touch anything. I drive in, I go to a Nike store, it says purchase merchandise worth $200 and get first uh, uh, two hours off or get $20 off. I do that, I go to the counter, the uh, the person at the counter shows me that, uh, you know, discount coupon code. I scan that code using my mobile again and I get a validation. I get $20 off in my session. And before I exit, uh, I scan the QR, I make the payment. At the exit, I scan the QR again, the gate opens and I move out. So the entire flow of the user uh, in a gated facility or in a gateless facility today can be driven just by using user's mobile phone. And all we need is um, to properly make appropriate usage of QR codes at different locations. And that's the power of QR where you can store so much information in the QR and direct the user to the appropriate locations and allow them to facilitate the entire entry, exit, validations, payments, even referring uh, when you're making a refer from uh, uh, to get discount codes or doing some marketing campaigns. That's what QR can do for all of us in the parking industry. I just want to show you what exactly this means. I know oh, David 
initially touched upon what what is the difference between scanning a QR and showing a QR. Uh, this is from one of our locations. It's fairly straightforward. You just scan, open up your camera, scan the QR code, and as soon as you scan the QR code, the barrier opens up. And this is where we use our GMP access, which is the gate kit technology we have created. And I'll talk about that as we move ahead. Uh, but important thing to understand with QR is it is independent of the platform. You can use it via uh, a mobile application. You can download an app and use it. You can just scan the QR using the camera of your mobile and a web page will open, open up and you can just uh, drive in, drive out or make the payments or uh, get a validation. And you can also use app clips, which is the latest feature by Apple, where uh, uh, let me just quickly show you how that works. Uh, it's a brilliant feature which Apple has just launched with iOS 14, where you scan a QR code, an app clip opens up. You don't have to download any app. Uh, you don't have to register anywhere because it uses your Apple sign in, and you don't have to add any payment method because it is uh, inherently integrated with the Apple Pay wallet. So all we have to do is, you know, as a user, I just scan a QR code, and that is linked to the app clip which we have created. The app clip opens up. And uh, if it is an on-street location, uh, you just enter how much time you want to spend there. It'll give you a tariff. You punch in your license plate number. And once you have added your license plate, you can, uh, I mean, assuming the location is pay by plate, you just click on pay and the session starts uh, and we deduct the payment from your Apple wallet. So completely streamlined um, and something which we now see as one of the leading payment mechanisms uh, in the iOS ecosystem to start with. So these are a few of the use cases which we now see uh, picking up in the parking industry globally. We have our own GMP access kit, which can be plugged into your barrier. And you can, this integrates with all sorts of parking barrier in the industry. And all it will cost you is $250 of a kit, which you can buy off Amazon, plug it into your barrier, connect it with your loops and just paste QR stickers at the entry, at the exit, and uh, give or distribute QR codes to merchants for validation. Uh, it comes with an add-on feature of Bluetooth. So if you want uh, the users to use Bluetooth using the app, they can do that for an additional $100 off device. So fairly straightforward, works with all of your gates. Just summarizing why we should uh, and why we are focusing on QR all across the world is because it works with any barrier. The installation is fairly straightforward. It takes less than 30 minutes. Uh, it's a DIY install. You can plug it into your garage on your own. You don't need any uh, physical uh, or uh, any major changes in your infrastructure. The hardware cost is approximately $250 per lane and there is zero maintenance because you practically just take printouts of stickers uh, and paste it at di different locations. So that's about us. We uh, at Get My Parking offer a complete white label solution to operators globally. And we have six different products starting from GMP lot for surface slots and garages. Uh, GMP access is our gate kit. GMP street is our uh, on-street payment systems. Permit is a complete end-to-end -end comprehensive with a self-managed portal for managing your monthlies, uh, which in also includes Flexi Permit, which we spoke about in the last webinar where you could offer like a, a package of 10 sessions or you could sell 900 minutes or 1000 minutes to a user. And AI and IQ are more around analytics and solving some of the deep industry problems using machine learning. So that's about us. Thanks a lot uh, for uh, taking out time today. And we can take questions as uh, David, over to you. Yeah, so thanks for that, Chirag. We've got uh, we've got one question. Maybe a few more will trickle in. But this question's about app clips. I think they're new, and I've spent some time trying to understand what they are and how they work. But we got one question here from Shine asking, "How do I make an app clip available to my parker? What what does a what does a parking operator need to do to enable that?" Oh, that's fairly straightforward, David. Uh, one is, I mean, when it comes to app clip, it's fairly new, right? So there is two step process. One is you need to first upgrade your facility, put the $250 device in the gates so that it can start accepting uh, 
have clips. So that's the infrastructural change which you need to do or an add-on onto your existing parts. And second is you need to subscribe to our uh, GMP lot uh, as a product, which comes with a white labeled app clip. So let's just say, you know, you, um, you have a specific uh, brand which you want your app clip to look like. We'll just uh, white label it for your brand. And the user, when they scan the QR at the gate, uh, it will be your app clip which will open up and the users will be able to make payments and use the QR to enter and exit. Got it. So it sounds pretty straightforward. So I think in interests of time, we've, uh, we've managed to do this well this time. We're, we're getting this done with five minutes to spare. So as, uh, as has been custom at the end of every one of these webinars, I'm going to have one final closing poll, which is just to tell us what we should be talking about next time. So I'm going to launch that right now. If you can kindly give us some feedback, just telling us what do you want to hear more about in terms of parking technology and software. So if you could take a minute and, and give us some feedback, we would really appreciate it. So while that goes on, Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a real pleasure to, to get a couple of different presentations going at one time. And I love what you presented, especially that ski hill thing stuck in my brain for some reason. Yeah, and I see um, uh, Yona, Yona Stern is, is one of our uh, attendees here. And, and I just want to shout out to uh, Yona and the Arrive team. They're actually handling uh, the prepaid booking portion of that uh, installation with us. So. Uh, shout out to Yona and the Arrive team. Thanks for attending. Yona, how you doing? All right. Well, I think we've uh, we've given this a good minute. So I think we've got a, a sense of what people are looking for for next time. I'll share the results for those of you who are interested. Uh, looks like we've got some asks in a few different areas, but loyalty programs seem like the topic that people want to hear about. So maybe that'll be our next webinar. So once again, thank you all so very much for coming to join us. Uh, I'll wish you all a Merry Christmas. And I don't, I'm sorry, Tony, I'm speaking like a Texan and I don't mean to do that. <laughs> speaking my language, y'all. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. We'll see you in the new year. Thanks everyone, bye. Thanks everyone, happy holidays.